I'm Rose Lance Roberts. Uh, let's talk a little bit about. By the way, yesterday, you know, we talked about funny names. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> not surprisingly, I got about a thousand emails yesterday with everybody giving me their submissions of about that story. About that story, right? <laughs> I just got everybody was sending me in their, you know, I went to school with or uh-huh. I knew somebody named, yeah. you know, like I went to school with one of my favorite ones was uh, Catherine Nat, Cat, and she went by Cat Nat. <laughs> so, you know, but. <laughs> Richard Smasher, if you know the nickname. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just, yeah. Uh, I mean, just tons of these. Uh, yes, all day long yesterday. <laughs> Don't send me any more. I got it. People can't, have. Can't yeah. wait for the bug emails. <laughs> Golden Nugget was another one. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Don't need any more emails on that. I'm trying to answer real emails. Like, people, help me with my 401k plan. Let me, let me work on those. Because <laughs> I can't help but respond to the ones with funny names. <laughs> Anyway. Did you say your kids were bored? Yeah, no. <laughs> Task them on that one. I, I should, right? <laughs> Here, here's a job for you. Doesn't pay anything. Get used to it. Neither will any other job you get in your lifetime. <laughs> this will make you want to go to college. <laughs> um, so interesting thing. So let's a little uh, kind of a update on what's going on with Outbreak. So 1.3 million, 3.5 million uh, total cases right now worldwide, 75,000 deaths. Uh, in the U.S., we've actually passed... Uh, 10, we're actually about to clip 11,000 deaths um, here, um, total cases at 368,000 uh, currently. And there's concern, though, also that the total cases in the U.S. and the number of deaths actually are undercounted because of lack of testing. In other words, since the COVID-19 virus emulates the flu or pneumonia, sorry, um, in a lot of cases, there are people that are sick. Uh, they've died, and they, since they didn't have a test, they assume it's pneumonia. So there is some concern that even some of our numbers may be undercounted, but still, you know, there's, you know, we're still in the uptick of this. So um, another thing that we're watching is, and particularly with China right now, keep a watch on China. There seems to be a secondary case outbreak that may be coming in China. Also, and they see that's one of the big concerns here about unlocking the economy and getting people back to work is, is that we see a, a tapering of the cases of the virus. We assume that we've passed the peak, and so we kind of release the economy. Everybody goes back to work, and we have another big outbreak again. You know, that is the worst possible outcome, economically speaking. Um, one of the big kind of, mis, I guess, misnomers at this point, if you want to use that term, is that as soon as uh, I got a tweet about this yesterday. So we've had 10 million people uh, file jobless claims over the last two weeks. That's going to be another big number again this week. We're talking about unemployment jumping to north of 20 percent potentially as we get through this. The problem with shutting down a business is that you can't just reopen it right away. It's it's there's there's a lot of things that happen when you're shutting down a business and and not operating for a period of time, that you, when you go to reopen, things just don't go back to where they were. Um, you know, reopening a business and restarting business, there's a couple of things that happen. Once you're shut down, there's a potential loss of business that may never come back. In other words, um, let's say Brent and I do a similar business and I shut down and Brent figures out a way to be a little bit crafty and keep operating to some degree. Um, even though he's reduced his staff, right? Um, so he's just he's a little bit more innovative. And what happens is is that some of my customers that were buying the same product from me now are buying from him. And so when we come back, so even though I open back up, doesn't mean necessarily that customer comes right back to me because he's already having his needs supplied there. Um, and this is going to happen with a lot of businesses. There's going to be a lot of businesses that reopen that they'll reopen but their business isn't going to immediately come right back because a customers don't have any money to come back and spend with they've found another outlet for that need or they've replaced that need all entirely in other words they figured out that well i don't really need that what i needed was this over here that happens and that's just part of business right so there's a lot of expectation that as soon as we reopen the economy 
everybody's just going to come surging back in and we're all going to be right back to where we were previously and everything's going to be fine. That is probably not going to be the case. Um, we are going to see a rebound. Absolutely. So when we read, we, we reopen the economy, there's going to be a couple things that happen. First, there is a lot of pent up demand, except for toilet paper. Um, so once we reopen the economy, you know, we will see a, a, a boost in economic activity. Right. And that's going to also lead to inflationary pressures because we're going to see price demand starting to come up. We'll see prices rise as people come back into the economy. So we are have this inflationary push and we're going to have this kind of this initial surge of activity. Then it's going to die down again. And this is because people are now going to be coping with the reality of where they are, which is lack of employment, stagnant wages, um, those type of or just and or they or and or they just don't have any money to spend. You know, when you take a look at the statistics, and we've talked about this a lot on the show, the number of people that were going into this crisis basically only had a, a couple of weeks at the most, in most cases, of liquid cash to live on. Their emergency funds were not really existent. They had you know maybe a thousand dollars in the bank at most. So a lot of these individuals are going to come back online. And they don't have any money to, to immediately just come, you know, buy everything that they haven't been able to get to, right? So, you know, just because I reopen the economy doesn't mean that immediately everybody runs out and eats at Taco Cabana, right? Um, you know, or whatever your favorite restaurant is, because they don't ha necessarily have any money to do that with. They've been trying to just keep their bills paid, keep their, their lifestyle somewhat together at this moment, and they're completely out of capital, at this uh, at this juncture, so when we reopen the economy, there's there's you know there's going to be a lot of problems trying to get the economy moving again, and an, econ the, an economy the size of the U.S., which is you know 22 23 trillion dollars, it's not something that you just immediately shut down and just immediately reopen again and everything's back to normal. So the point is is that we have a lot of expect a lot of hope that things will return to normal very quickly. But if you take a look at what's happening with the economic data, what's happening with jobs and wages, and then think about what happens after you restart the economy and what you've got to deal with, all of a sudden, this takes on a little bit different picture. Now, all that means is, is that let's be optimistic here and, and, and say, look, everything's going to be fine. We're going to get back to where we are uh, and where we were. We will eventually get there. But there's some things that we're going to have to deal with first that are going to hamper the financial markets. They're going to hamper, um, you know, people getting back to work. They're going to hamper people's, you know, trying to make ends meet, these type of things. And while the Fed is doing a, a yeoman's job at this point of bailing out everything in the financial markets, what this will lead to is a bigger gap between the rich and the poor. And we already had this wealth gap occurring, you know, before this even occurred. We talked about the fact that the the top 10 percent of the economy owned about 84 percent of the stock market. After this comes out, we're going to talk about the top 5 percent of the economy owns 90 percent of the stock market because we've now done a, a shift of wealth from those without any money. Right. And, and if you take if you think about the people that had 401k plans, they had IRAs, they had in some invest, they had some money in an investment account for a large chunk of those Americans that they are tapping those. Look, the, the government just made this easier, too. They said, look, if you need to take money out of your 401k plan to make ends meet, we won't penalize you. OK, great. But now they have drawn down their 401k plan to pay bills. They no longer have that money available to invest. So when the market does come back and the economy does come back, they're starting basically over again, trying to rebuild that wealth for retirement. The people that had money that didn't that that were already invested and 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 had plenty of savings and didn't have to draw down their 401k plans, they're in a better position to monopolize on the recovery of the market down the road. So what this will do is this will, will basically affect, and this is what the Fed, this is what Fed interventions do. It creates a wealth transfer system from the middle class to the rich. And we're seeing that happen 
again as we do this. And, and, and look, the more the Fed monetizes government debt and the more the bigger the deficits we run, the bigger the debts that we have, the slower the economic growth. The slower the economic growth, the bigger that wealth gap is going to continue to get. That's just a function of how this works. But as an investor and from an investment standpoint, we're, we're, you know, we're seeing this rally off the bottom. That's great. Perfect. Participate with that. But be careful because we still have to deal with the economic consequences that are coming. And we haven't even seen really any of the first pieces of economic data. We've seen some hints about how bad it's going to be. We haven't actually seen the numbers yet, and they're probably going to be worse. Be right back after the break. Catch the best of The Real Investment Show anytime, anywhere from Stitcher Smart Radio. Download podcasts of The Real Investment Show from Stitcher.com.